Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. In my Walking Dead finale video, I asked you to submit all of your WTF questions about the episode and season five, so I picked 10 of them to answer in this video with one bonus question. I also have a few gift cards to give away, but real quick shout out, I go into detail a lot of things that influence what might be happening in season five, so I go into very great detail for that stuff during the season five predictions video that I'm gonna be posting later tonight. Time for high fives though. Congratulations to Midor Bishi, Boca Junkie, and Federico Mangano. I'll be reaching out to you on your channels. You each want a $20 Amazon gift card. Don't worry if you didn't win anything. The giveaway is continuing through Game of Thrones, so there'll be 10 more weeks of the giveaway. So that'll start on Sunday with my Game of Thrones episode one video. So time to answer some questions. Careful for potential spoilers if you haven't seen the episode yet, but number one, Bells asks, why is everyone in that train car? And what's up with the shrine? Is that for people that the Terminus people have lost or eaten? So. All very important things. That A train car, obviously we thought the finale was all about A for Alexandria, but it turns out it's really just much more for practical reasons. There was also this crazy theory that because episode 15 was titled Us, that both episodes formed this overlapping story called USA. I think that what ended up happening is, is that on one hand, you know, it references their current predicament as in they're stuck in train car A, like it's literally just a place. But I also think that it refers to the terminus itself. Remember all those maps, and Gareth even said that all the railroad lines converge there, as in railroad line A goes to X, you know, X being Alexandria in this case. So maybe it does relate to Alexandria. The shrine, though, has something to do with the idea of Terminus, I think, is a focal point. Whatever their ideology is, it's pretty clear they perform human sacrifice, ending with the consumption of said person. That's what I think all those names on the ground were for, their sacrifices. Who or what they're sacrificing people to is a little unclear right now, but I think if they were straight up hunters, then they would just act more like Joe's group. They wouldn't take the time to write all those creepy runes on the floor and light candles. Question number two, Mikado Tanaka asks, Why didn't Daryl tell Rick Beth got kidnapped? Or at the very least, tell him she was last seen driving off in a car. So Daryl is not the most forthcoming person. He totally talks less than a grumpy teenager, or maybe he still is a grumpy teenager. Either way, I think he conveyed to Rick that her status and whereabouts are unknown. You have to remember how flawed all these people are. So for every smart thing that Rick did in this episode, someone was just as likely to do something stupid. I guess you could call Daryl's an air of omission. But he didn't purposely withhold that. It was just like whenever Beth was trying to question him about why he was so happy, and he just shrugged and tried to tell her it was because she was rubbing off on him. Question number three, Doctor Who 50 and Beyond asks, do you think that Tyrese, Carol, and Judith became baby back ribs? When I read your question, I actually threw up in my mouth a little bit and then sang that Austin Powers Fat Bastard song in my head. No, I don't think they're dead. As of the last moment in the timeline that is, I don't think any of the survivors have been killed. That doesn't mean they won't be whenever the season comes back though. Also, think about the cannibals this way. You would want the most meat you could get per person, and anyone who's a farmer will understand why. They just start with the biggest person first, and then maybe even fatten them up a little bit more before eating them. They'd end up feeding way more creepy psychos that way. It doesn't look like they're killing people for pleasure, just as part of some weird ritual and for sustenance. I guess that means that Tyrese and Abraham would probably be the first to go, but we really won't know until the first couple of episodes. Question number four, Calvert Thomas asks, where are they in Georgia? So based on, you know, real life and the Terminus maps, it looks like they're in Macon. Question number five, Bokeh Junkie asks, was the whole new sheriff in town Beth flashback moment foreshadowing for something? I think it's foreshadowing for Beth's character development in season 5. Like she's going to be taking a new role. Robert Kirkman said that we might not necessarily see a lot of Beth, we might not find out what's up with her for a while. That implies that she wasn't taken to Terminus and whoever grabbed her was someone else. Everyone refer back to Jesus and Gabriel theories. Emily Kinney in real life hasn't been demoted from series regular status, so she's not off the show or anything. We will see her in episodes, just probably not as many. If everyone's at Terminus right now, they'll probably spend most of the episodes there. So if she's somewhere else, we just won't see her as much. Her story will happen off screen a little bit more. Question number six, Cameron Peter asks, Could Rick or any of them have talked their way into peace if they had come as a group? No, I actually don't think it would have gone down any other way. Remember that creepy shrine, it said, never trust. So no matter what, the Terminus people would have never taken them in. And even if they did, the survivors would have flipped their shit whenever they found out about the human sacrifice cannibal stuff. 
so really they would have ended up in one of those shipping cars no matter what. Question number seven, Soy Taylor asks, during the running scene, whenever they ran past some storage containers, do you think that was Carol, Tyrese, and Beth? And did anyone else notice the trash on the way back into the train car? Was that powdered milk? Does that mean that they're there? So actually listen to it again. It does not sound like Carol, Tyrese, and obviously Judith or Beth, but I do think that they're there. The people that were stuck in that container sounded like someone young, but not Beth, and a man, but not Tyrese. I think they'll reveal those characters in episode one. Maybe they'll be like red shirts to the cannibals and we'll just eat it, so to speak, in the first half of the episode as an example of what's really going on. As for the powdered milk, the camera did linger on it for an unusually long time, so that means it really is an important detail. If Carol, Tyrese, and Judith are at Terminus, I think it's most likely they're being kept somewhere separate, you know, not in one of those containers. But yes, I do feel like powdered milk equals baby, so fingers crossed that Judith is okay. Question number eight, Cheap Munch asks, do you think that Tyrese will have something to do with their escape next season? How are they gonna escape? So Rick's statement basically lets you know his final statement that yeah, they're gonna escape and they have to get to Alexandria somehow. Following up on the powdered milk theory, if Tyrese isn't in a container and they let a few people out to sacrifice or question them, they could always buddy up and start killing other Terminus people. They'd have to have at least a couple Otherwise they'd be overwhelmed and the other Terminus people would just execute anyone left in container A. So that's actually a lot of ifs, but here is where Morgan comes in. I know everyone wanted to see Morgan in the finale, but he might be somewhere lurking around Terminus. I do really feel like he's going to help at some point. He's supposed to be back eventually, and there was a rumor that Scott Gimple was going to insert him somewhere in season 4. Since we didn't see him in the finale, it's totally possible he could show up in the premiere. He's one of the few crazy people with the intellect and the resources to pull a breakout. So Tyrese plus Morgan plus Crazy Rick equals escape. Question number nine, James Kirk asks, what if Beth wasn't taken by Terminus and instead by Jesus or Jesus, however you want to say it. So I already mentioned, you know, Jesus Gabriel theories, but let me just go a little bit further into that. If Jesus took Beth to Hilltop or Alexandria, then it's likely that her story in season five will just play out at one of those locations which I actually think is really cool. It gives her an opportunity to become more of a Carol type badass. You know, hopefully she'll be able to maintain that smile that Carol seems to have lost. But yes, it is seeming more and more likely that Beth is one step ahead of the survivors, at least in terms of, you know, big destinations in the comics that the other people will get to eventually. Question number 10, Oliver asks, do you think the survivors will stay at Terminus through season five? So a couple of new characters were just bumped to series regular in season five, including Gareth. So I think yes. At the very least, we'll probably spend several episodes at Terminus in season five. It's just too big of a location for them to just blow right through. Think of all the sets they had to build. That's a lot of time and energy spent on something you might just only see for two hours. No idea on which episode it'll be before they head to Alexandria, but plan on two things. An extended stay at Terminus and two, learning to enjoy being a vegetarian. And one last bonus question, No Sherlock asks, will there be a three-way battle in season five with Rick's group versus Sanctuary versus Saviors? So I think you're trying to refer to the all-out war that's going on in the comics right now. No, I don't think they're gonna try and pile all those elements into one season. There will be a ton more action, but in terms of big locations and groups, we'll see. I think we'll probably only see one of the other big locations, you know, either Hilltop or Alexandria, and just get a peek at the other. They really do want to stretch the story out as much as possible. That means they can hold back on Negan, which is like the next big A-bomb that Kirkman drops on Rick and the survivors. So thank you so much for submitting your questions. This was a ton of fun, as always. I'll try to do as many Q&As as possible in the future. But like I said, I'm slowly kind of stepping down Walking Dead videos to like one a week. My next one's actually going to be that Season 5 predictions video. Be sure to subscribe below to get it. I'll be posting that later tonight. You can actually click here to watch it right now. I'll add the annotation as soon as I post it. And you can click here to watch my review of the finale. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys tonight. High fives.